everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this a pop-up box card. I've made lots of these before, so I'll share that playlist up here for you, and you should have lots of inspiration because they're all different sizes and, and styles and stuff. But yeah, I really enjoyed this one, and I'll share, you, share with you everything that I've used because that's what's inspired me to create this style. It folds completely flat, fitting in an envelope. I'm going to have to do a custom envelope for this because it's, I think it's, it's six wide. So the idea is that you do six by six high, but I went a bit high with my happy birthday and, and all the other bits there. So I, I'm, I'm coming in at about seven, seven and a half in height, but that's fine. I can use the envelope punch board to, like I said, do that custom envelope. But it's really lovely, pops up here. And stands up. Now these just look lovely as decorative pieces as well so if you want to make something nice for your craft room, if you like to have seasonal projects that you display then this is a perfect one for spring and all that kind of lovely stuff. So yes this is what we're going to make. So I'll pop that to one side. So you really actually don't need any kind of large card stocks so it's really good for using scraps. All of the images I have stamped which moves me on nicely to the stamps and what I've used. So this is this beautiful company so it's the Hackney and Co it's craft consortium and this is the Herbarian premium collection I think there are four other themed papers with matching stamps and embellishments and all that kind of stuff within this kind of collection I think I will share all the links I got this from craft stash they have all the collection there and I've the other one I want to get is the riverbank and I can't remember the name of the other one but it's beautiful so check them out because I really think there's something for everybody there I'm not going to go through all the papers you can just see I think is there an overview this is what I love is about this paper pack as well is obviously you can use all of that there that's you know completely usable you've got all these pieces here on your back page that you can cut out and here you've got all these fun lovely images as well that you can cut out and you've got all the different herbs there which I think is perfect for anybody that you know who enjoys gardening or cooking so and they're just you can just get a rough idea there they're beautiful but like I said, not going to go through all of that. And then I also purchased the two stamp sets to match. So this is the one that I've used. And just to give you an idea of how these stamp. So that was this one here. And then I stamped st uh, the word sage, which is from this set here. I haven't really used this one. I'm going to do something else with all these lovely kind of uh, leaves and things. And then let me show you. You've got the... Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Lovely little watering can. There's the smaller basil there. Oops, sorry, I've got the glare. You can see it there. I like this, it says drink me because you've got your teacup here and then you've got your scissors and everything. And that's the larger herb one there as well. So I went ahead and stamped, cut them out and I've already kind of started with those. These here I'm not using today purely because they're obviously quite small and I just think the proportions didn't quite work so if I was to put the little kind of um, trowel and uh, scissors there it just would have looked a little bit lost against the larger ones so they will be getting used in other projects but they are metal embellishments and they are absolutely beautiful so that's those there so decide on your theme and what you're going to do like I said if you're you know haven't done this style card before have a little look at that playlist that I've shared because I've done Christmas styles I've done you know flower ones I've done magical like kind of whimsical ones so there's lots there so that's everything that I'm going to be using on mine today now I'm not going to have this as like a happy birthday or get well or anything like that. I'm going to leave it blank because I don't actually know what I'm going to do with this one. This one I've already got it lined up for something so or someone. So um, yeah, but this one is just going to stay plain for the time being. So it's all deconstructed and the idea is it's kind of like a little kind of box or crate or kind of like your table in your shed. That's the kind of idea I've got with this. So I've gone along and I've cut all of my craft card down into all these different sided, size, sized pieces and I went ahead and I've distressed it all with the Tim Holtz Distress Ink. This is the frayed burlap. I love this one when you're using craft card because it gives a really subtle kind of dirty look, that real worn, distressed, just I love it. I think it looks really good. So if I bring it up now, you can see, and it blends so well. And it also kind of seeps into the the cards as well. So the initial kind of darkness does fade, and it goes a bit lighter. Okay, so that's what I've gone ahead and done with everything, apart from the two inner kind of panels that you attach everything to. I've left those plain. So for the corners, you are going to need four pieces that are one by four. 
okay? And along the one inch side, you want to score at half an inch, okay? Fold, burnish, so you'll have four pieces like this. And they're all your corners ready. And then go ahead and distress them all. It's better to distress it when you folded and burnished it because then you really get to appreciate all that kind of ink that you're, you're adding to it, okay? So you want four pieces of that size. Then for your front and back panels, so if anybody watched my Easter crate that I done, then this is very similar in the way that we're gonna put it together. It was my Easter basket that I done with the carrots in it. So this is three quarters of an inch by four, and you want one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. Again, I have to stress them. You wouldn't think they are, but they have got kind of a, a, a kind of just a faint, dirty look to them, so. And then these are your two side pieces. So these are two by three quarters of an inch. So again, you want eight. So one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. And then for your panels inside to hang, or attach everything to, these are five by half an inch. And along the five inch side, you want to score at half an inch and four and a half. And then you're gonna fold those over. Okay, you have two pieces of this. And then I've just attached some red tape. You can use wet glue if you want to, or you know, double-sided tape, but I've just gone ahead in preparation for the video and put double-sided tape on all of that. You will have also noticed that I've gone and put double-sided tape on the very ends of every single piece, including all those small pieces as well. Okay, so go ahead, get all that prepared, stamp everything that you want to use. You can see how I've kind of, you know, started filling everything up. I've stuck things here as well, because the idea is that these are kind of hanging on like the wooden bench. And then I've got that little piece down there as well. So see what you've got and start to create your theme and then we'll start putting it together. Okay, so it's really straightforward and entirely up to you, you know, what order um, or way that you decide to do this. I like to do it kind of starting with the back first or the front because you can flip it. Um, you may prefer that you want to start working on the side. So, so I'm going to take the backing off of one of these long front pieces, okay? Now you're adding your, your tape to the front of it. So this is actually going to be on show. You're not adding it to the back side. This is the front side. Then I'm going to flip it over and you're going to stick it down. So this one, I'm butting right up to the very top here and up to the folded score line. So if I just stick that one down so you can see now what I've done, just stuck that in like so. And then I'm not going to do that side, I'm going to continue. Now this is where if you've got a grid, it's quite handy. I'm just using these lines here, I'm just going to just make sure they're lined up against a line. It doesn't matter what one, as long as you can see it. It would just help you get it all lined up. So I can see that's lined up. Now I'm leaving a quarter of an inch gap, so I know that this is, this is these are half inch cut the squares that I've got on my mat. So I can see here that it's halfway between this square because it's three quarters of an inch. Now I'm gonna leave a quarter of an inch gap between everything. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm just gonna pop it in and line it up with that next line. Okay, that is quarter of an inch gap there now. It's entirely up to you what gap you want to leave. You may only want to add three of these panels and have bigger gaps, you may wanna add five. So again, once you see how easy this is to put together, it's very easy for you to adapt. Um, for yourself and very easy to make very big as well if you want to have a really huge one and like I said as a decorative piece in your craft room then it would look really cool and then the last one again make sure you give it a quarter of an inch gap there will actually be that piece that sticks up here that will become the bottom so it's like the little feet and I've really distressed the ends there to almost look like there's like mud and you know when it's rained and all that kind of it gets quite grubby on the bottom so I've kind of done that there just to make it look a little bit more authentic so now if I turn that around you can see there's the little foot that's appeared okay so next I'm going to go on to this side here so I'm going to grab four of these smaller ones and I'm going to do the same thing so I'm going to take off the backing now you don't really need to worry about having a mat now because you're going to just line them up with this one. So I'm coming in here and this one you just want to make sure is right at the very top, like so. But all of the next ones you're just going to line up, you know, make sure it sits next to the one that it's next to. So again, just pop it in there, like so. And just keep working it all, folding it all in, making sure it stays nice and 
you know, you've got that right angle there and everything's really neat. In fact, that one has dropped a little bit. Let's just pull that up. There we go. Just do that now for the other ones. Okay, so now I've got that corner there. Next, I'm going to add on this corner here. So then I'm just going to start with the top one and make sure that one gets in there. Flip it over just so you can see. And then I'll grab my bone folder there as well. Just go over, making sure everything is all lined up. So already now you can see we've got our corner. And this is when it's good. Obviously I'll put wait till it's all together, but you can see when you go over you get real really pick up the colour and really kind of mess it up a bit. So there you go, you can see how different that is now. Looks great. So you just want to continue that. So I'm going to do all of this side again. You don't want to do the back yet, okay? So you want to do this next side because I'm going to show you how to add these in really in a really simple way. It's much easier to do it when it's kind of not quite put together rather than doing all of your four sides and then trying to kind of get your hand in there to, to connect those pieces. So I'm going to grab this one here and attach it and then add the small ones there. Okay, so that's where you want to be at this point. So we've just got the back piece left to do, but before we add them, it's best to add these pieces. So I've already popped the double-sided tape on. Again, you're gonna do one side at a time. So it's entirely up to you where you want to put these. So if you look inside here, you can see I've got one about half an inch, three-eighths of an inch from the front, and then I've got about three-eighths of an inch gap, and then the other one, and then I've got the gap at the back. So they're probably not equally kind of laid out, but um, and I've also got some at the bottom there where I done it that way first and then realized I'd done it upside down. But if anything, it gives it a little bit of strength. But so what I would say is I'm going to come in and I'm sticking it on the very top one. You may want to go further down. You might want to stick it further down here. But so there's your side pieces. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to line up this folded piece with this piece here. So I just do this one here. So you can see there, I've just used this piece here, the edge of it, and kind of lined this up with that piece, okay? So this is gonna be the front of mine. So now you can see, once that gets attached to the other side, it's about half an inch from the front. So the next one, take off your backing again. Okay, so with this one, I'll probably go back a little bit further. So I'm gonna then go where the folded piece is here, the edge of it, I'm going to do halfway now between this whole piece here. So, you know, this really isn't like exact, guys. You can put it wherever you want, as long as you get both of them in there. So now you can see, I've probably got them a bit more even now than the first one I did. You see now, once they attach to this side. Now the easiest way to get it to attach so that you know that everything is going to line up properly is lie it down completely flat, fold these pieces over. Again, I'm just going to take off all of my backing there. Okay, keep the sticky sides, the tabs folded down, and just bring this side right over the top, like so. Because already now you know it's going to fold flat because it already is. And now when you bring it up, you've got them perfectly where you need them. It's so easy. And then just go back along the other side and just make sure everything folds flat. You might find one side folds flatter than the other better. Then stick with that side and keep that to the way it folds flat because this folds flat really nicely that way. It's, it's okay that way, but it's much, much better that way. Okay, so now we just need to finish the last pieces. So you grab those four. Again, always do one side first. I just, personally, I find it easier. So I'm just gonna pop this one in now and line it up there and just go and do all of that side. And then I've just taken the backing now off of those ones, fold the whole thing flat, and you can just fold that last one over. And everything should line up, like so. Done. So I'm just gonna now distress some of these corners a little bit more and get some more on the feet there. And in terms of writing your message of, you know, to and from, just do something on the back here. You can just add a little panel here. I'm probably gonna have something so it looks like a little, 
you know, like hanging sign or something. So yeah, it's easy to do. Just stick some squares on the back there and you can write to and from. Okay, so now it's down to decorating. So I've already gone ahead, cut all of these pieces. So I'm gonna have four pieces that actually are floating and then all these bits here I'm kind of going to just stick around them and stuff so I actually fussy cut these images from the paper pack itself but for this one I think I'm just going to stick with the leaves because if I keep fussy cutting them I'm not going to have them for more projects so I really love these you know obviously all the different herb plants so I want to keep them for other projects so this time I'm going to use them but I've also got these which I picked up very inexpensive I showed them in one of my what did I get um, tutorial and um, videos and uh, yeah, so I've just added some of them in here because I thought they worked really, really nicely. So I've got just one there, I think. I'm sure I've got another one somewhere else, so there might be two together. Anyway, so the acetate is about half an inch wide, and in terms of length, they're all varying really, but this is five inches. So if you get them all so they're on five inches, and then you can obviously change them. Um, in terms of how to decorate and what to do first, it's entirely up to you. You can stick all this down and do that first if you want. I'm going to do that last so I can see how everything looks first of all. So I'm going to stick with the same kind of layout. So I'm going to have the larger kind of jars at the back there and then this herb one and then the smaller ones there. So if you are wanting to make sure that you get this to fit into a six by six envelope, what you need to do is lie it down flat. So mine's going to be that way. And this is coming in at six inches wide a little bit over but your envelope gives is six and one eighth but that fit in my six by six envelope still and then these are four inches high so where's my six here so I if you're going to get it in six by six you've only actually got that area to play around with and if you imagine trying to squeeze all of this in at that height it just wouldn't look right so I would say you know go up to eight and get it in a six by eight envelope, which, which you can buy pre-made anyway. So yeah, it's entirely up to you, but look at my other ones up here because I've got lots of different sizes, all right? So I'm gonna start off at the front with the smallest one here, and I've just realized actually that isn't even on acetate, so I'm gonna take that piece off because some of them just stick directly onto this piece here. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of my wet glue here. Because I'm sticking card to card, I'm gonna pop this one right in there. So I'm just sticking it onto that front one there just so you can see it poking out there and then this basil one is going to go next to it there so that's now kind of my starting point and I'm going to work from that so I'm going to pop that just there and now everything else that I use I can make sure that I the idea is is that you can see everything so now I'm just trimming some of that acetate because this is going to go there. So you want to be able to see the mint. See, that's probably too high, so I'm actually going to cut a little bit more off. So you don't end up really even using that much acetate. But because I'm sticking acetate onto that craft card, I'm going to use my red tape. So I'm just going to show you this bit, and then I'll kind of speed up the rest of the video. So I always keep it kind of tilted towards me, and then it's quite easy to kind of work out where you want everything to be. So now I'm happy with those. And then the next one, I'm gonna have this green one here. So already I know I don't need all that. And that's gonna go on the next kind of tab back there. So you get the idea, you wanna make sure that they're all kind of evenly spaced.
Okay, so there is my finished card. Still obviously got my sentiment to go on there because I don't know whether it's going to be a birthday card or not, but you would have also just seen me add in this little cute little sign. I just had the idea because I thought, oh, some toothpicks, it'd be nice to make some little yeah, plant signs. So I just stamped herbs and rosemary. I'm going to just dress that one up and stick it with the other one. I need to put my hot glue on really and get it all properly stuck down. But I thought I'm going to have that one behind there. I did try it on there, but I think because I've already got the sentiment there and the happy birthday, I think that's just a bit too much. Whereas this one's still quite plain. So yeah, I think that looks quite nice. It kind of wedges in there for the minute. But yeah, it's just another nice idea and it's got that garden theme to it. So there you have it. So I'm going to probably, I like the idea of adding a pack of seeds behind the back here and then I'll maybe put them in a little pocket or something and that's where I can write who it's to and a little message and everything but I really like them hopefully they've inspired you do check out that playlist as I mentioned before because there's other sizes on that so there's smaller sizes as well if you do decide to make them please come and share them over on Mixed Up Crafters Facebook group it's a lovely group as I always say and more and more people are joining as always I'll share all of the product links in my blog so you'll be able to go and check out this collection and the other ones that I said as well because they are gorgeous but until then I'll be back again on Friday with another tutorial thanks for watching bye